when I went to do my doctoral work, which was supposed to be and was on Judaism at the time of Christ, yes. I was sent to learn Armenian. And I didn't only learn Armenian, I learned to have great affection and uh, sympathy for the Armenian people and its creativity. I found it, I just liked it. Mm. I liked it, it was interesting. There's a vast amount of material to study. The Armenian people are very delightful, mm. as well as being creative. And I learned to value the music and the, the art through, through my wife and the literary creation. I've also, I myself am a poet and I've also translated a good deal of medieval Armenian poetry into wow. English. Yes. Including, for example, such a work as the Adam Girk of uh, Arakil Sunetzi. Oh, this was a few years ago. Okay. Within the last decade. I yes. suppose I, I've done most of is the study of stories connected with the Bible. Yes. In Armenian. In, there's an enormous literature of Armenian biblical stories that are not in the Bible but are told retelling the Bible stories. I've recently published a book in Yerevan of texts of this sort. Published oh. by the Martin Adaran. I've published very many of these texts. That's one thing. The second thing I've done that came out of the first is a great interest in Armenian epigraphy. Yes. And we've had the. I had the great fortune in the very late 1970s and the early 1980s to work in the Sinai Desert, we did find extremely old Armenian inscriptions, not just on Mount Sinai, but also at various stopping places in the desert. They were dated archaeologically probably between 430 and 440, something like that, which means they were written in all likelihood when St. Mesrop Mashtots was still was alive, the oldest Armenian writing we now have. Uh -huh. That was a great privilege. This is one of the inscriptions, and it's the end, in my judgment, the end of the name Babgen. This is Ananya. Ananya, yes. Me and, uh, is the end of some other inscription that's lost. Uh -huh. All right. So it and starts from here. Yeah, that's got a separate number. You see, it's number five. Yes. This is ah, number this six. Ah, this is number six. All right. And this is the same man. This and Babken, these were in Nazareth, in the Church of the Annunciation. And then they went to Sinai, and they wrote their names in both places. The Latins built a new basilica and they found stones underneath below a mosaic floor that was damaged in an earthquake and we know that there was the earthquake in the middle of the fifth century in the year 447 right. and so anything under that floor is older than 447 right. so this was a quite extraordinary discovery I talked with the late uh, Aram Kalantarian who mm -hmm was the director of the Archaeological Institute of the Armenian Academy. Yes. He didn't have anything he knew of this age. These are unique. I've published many books. I've published about four, over 40 books. Yeah. On over most 40 of, books. Yeah, most of which are on Armenian things and 400 articles. And most of which are in what language? In Armenian? Mostly in English. Mostly in English. I've published a few things in Armenian, not yes. very many, yes. and now the book. And I've published in French and just a couple of things and, and so on, but mainly English. Mm -hmm. are, there, are there in any libraries abroad? Oh yes, of course, mm -hmm. of course, yeah. And they're all in Matinadaran or the Library of the Academy or the National Library right. in Yerevan as well. Mm. Uh, as far as I know, you're not dealing with the modern Armenian issues and no. the one that no, no, I, genocide I stopped issues. being institute, interested in about the 17th, 18th century. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not as a scholar interested in genocide. I'm as a human being and a, yes. a, a person yes. profoundly uh, committed yes. to uh, recognition 
and perhaps restitution if it's possible. Yeah. And I was in Armenia this year for 24th April. Yes. And I've been active. I brought the first lecturers who ever lectured at the Hebrew University on this mm -hmm. topic, Professor Richard Hovhanissian, many years ago. Yes, I know him. And every year we've held a, an evening uh, of genocide commemoration, not exactly on April 24th, usually a day before, a day after. Uh, yes, in Israel. At the university, the, at, at the, the Hebrew University, university yes. as an official university function. Yes. This is quite important because a lot of things go on that are run by the Armenian students' clubs or by some other... This is an official function of the Hebrew University. Mm -hmm. uh, how many students are there in the Armenian program? Well, at the moment school? there's not very many because we have... Well, we have in our history course, which is taught by um, Mr. Yoav Lev, we have 30 students. 30? Uh, about. My, my late wife had over 30 in her classes. In the language course last time we taught Krapar, there were about 8 or 9, which is a good number. We do not teach Ashkarapar. No, Krapar only. Yes. We teach Krapar, and I taught uh, Michin Hayren, yes. medieval Armenian, yes. which is not taught anywhere. Wow. So I taught it a few times because I had to study it. And um, so these days the, the Armenian program is thriving. It has its students and it continues the work. That Well, the Armenian program is, unfortunately, I was not replaced. Mm. As I was half professor of ancient Jewish thought and half professor of Armenian. Yes. I've been not replaced at all. Uh, we have, though, been able to have uh, a former student of mine, uh, Yoav Lev, who teaches Krapa and history, uh, introductory material. I continue to teach Krapa mm -hmm. for advanced students. And uh, at the moment, we're actually reading the Adam Girk of, of Sunetsi, but we've been reading a lot of different things. Yes. Uh, we have every year. Professor James Russell comes and he teaches oh. an intensive course for six weeks uh, and this year it will be in Arme on Armenian subject, I hope. And we were able to bring last year Professor Theo van Lint, a professor yes, of Armenian at Oxford, from Oxford yes. and, and he gave a series of lectures on Armenian literature as part of the literature of uh, West Asia. And do you travel to Armenia often? I, I'm usually once a year there, sometimes, occasionally twice. And occasionally I don't get there for two years, but uh, I, I can't tell you how many times I've been there anymore. <laughs> I lost count. And y you were also telling me about the graveyard uh, that you found? Yes, in, cemetery. Uh, the, the, the cemetery. Yes, yes, cemetery. I had the great, great the fortune. Story? Yes, yes. Well, the story was that, B that Bishop uh, Abraham Magadachian, who mm -hmm. is the uh, the primate uh -huh. of uh, Vajotstor went for a walk mm. near the village of Yeregis, which in the time of the Orbelians was the capital city of Vajotstor at the time of the Mongols, mm -hmm. and saw funny stones written, a cemetery with stones, gravestones that looked like Armenian gravestones, but they was not Armenian. And it yeah. occasionally came to me, and they were inscriptions in Hebrew and Aramaic. And they are of the 13th century, and there was they went on for about a hundred years. So there was a Jewish community in Yeregis uh, for at least a hundred years, uh, who were buried and uh, who were rich enough to leave gravestones like the family Orbelian cemetery in the same village, the same, made in the same workshop from mm -hmm. the same stone. Okay. And these are very important for something we didn't know, which was that there was Jewish settlement in Armenia. Uh, when was it? This was in the 13th century, 13th most of century. it. Yes, 13th. Yes. And uh, these people came from Iran. If you go straight south from, from Yeregis, mm -hmm. you, you end up in Tabriz. Mm -hmm. 
Ah, yes, in, in Iran. Yeah, which is Pas Armenia. Oh, right. Mm. Uh, to, to use the old name. Now right. it's Iran. Yes. So it was part of the Silk Road. The road went came, went from Central Asia. It went around Lake Lake Sevan, yes, over the mountain ridge, where and there's a caravanserai uh -huh. in those mountains, and then along the valley of uh, of the Arpi River, near where the wine is made nowadays, uh -huh. and then Winery. into into Vayotsor and into into Yeregis, which is I suppose. Uh, from Arini, it's probably half an hour's drive. Right. And you had okay. Jewish community there, and we know from Stepanos or Belian that there were also Jews in Kapan. Ah. So it's, uh, yes, it's, there's quite a lot of evidence, and uh, with, with Aram Topjan, Dr. Aram Topjan, we, we will now do a book on the history of the Jews in Armenia. Oh. That sounds like a new. Topic. Another project, yes, 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 yes. Project. There's no end. Uh, so you were talking about the Armenian genocide uh, well, being simply imp the, the, important to recognize. Why is it important for Israel, for Jews? It's important for any human being, mm. first of all. Uh, second, uh, uh, I, I, I think that we, we underwent the same thing. Mm. I would give it a special name, but I like to talk about the Jewish genocide, the Armenian Holocaust, just to make my point. What happened, happened. It's history, it was genocide, and we should recognize it, and it's just a moral imperative. But that's not just for Jews, for anyone who has a decent set of moral principles. And uh, I have nothing more to say about it. I mean, I, I bewail the human beings that died. I also bewail the West Armenian culture that was destroyed. Yes, exactly. When you think of Most the riches of, the of, of, uh, I mean, of the people that were produced by, I was, I was in uh, Istanbul, Constantinople we say, some years ago with Patriarch Mesrop who, who studied with me at one time, and I saw the, the Gemaran in which Ajarian, the great linguist, studied. Yes, he he yeah, was yeah, yeah. Bolsetsi, I think. And yes, it was a great culture and music and food and language and dialect. I managed, there was a special dialect talked in Jerusalem by the people that we call here Karakziner. And the Karakziner were the old Armenian families who were here before the, the people from the genocide, the Pachusner, arrived. Yes, yes. And they had a special sort of Armenian. There is no one alive now who talks it. But 20 years ago, I managed to make a series of recordings of the last speakers of this dialect. And they, they wait for a, a good dialectologist to analyze it. And this is one of the undocumented Armenian dialects that we've at least saved the, the speech, several, a lot of hours of speech in it. And now no one is talking speaking. No, about. I think the children, <coughs> the children of the last generation of speakers, yes. n understand because their parents talk. But no one speaks it. No one speaks it well anymore, because yeah. they'd be dead. Because it, it, when the when the school was set up in the Armenian quarter, with the when all the people came after 1917. Then they went over. And they set up the school about 1920. I don't remember exactly. And then. West Ar standard West Armenian, which meant the Bolis dialect, became the standard dialect. So, but it's not what people talk at home, it's what they talk in the school and in official language. At home, the Karakzine used to talk their dialect, but they don't anymore. Their children, uh, many have emigrated too, they're not here anymore. Um. Uh, well, when were the first Armenians uh, who settled in uh, in Jerusalem? In Jerusalem, the first in Armenian I know about was uh, someone who came here in the year 360, in the time of the son of Constantine. But this is just the first one I know. 360. Yes. The first Armenian here in yeah. this land. Mm. He uh, he was a pilgrim and he came here from Satala, which is near Maratya. Mm -hmm. And he lived eventually, actually not in Jerusalem, but down near the foothills of the mountains. And he was a, 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 a solitary monk. Right. Uh, 
He was called uh, Eutaktos. Mm, Eutaktos. He had a Greek name, and with our text about him is in Greek, of course, because no one in 360, no one wrote Armenian. Yes. So he's mentioned in Epiphanius. So that's when it sta started. That's yeah. the first. And we've been finding new inscriptions now. I just published one in here, in this magazine. Uh, there's no this picture, one? unfortunately, yes, but from the ninth, seventh century inscription of someone called Karapet, but we don't know who that was. Right. And we've got uh, old inscriptions here. There's 200 full color plates, the number of pages doesn't matter, but this is to establish a benchmark for dating Armenian well, writing. Well, yeah, this is the oldest Armenian manuscript that has a date in the world. It's what is the date? Eight, 862. Yeah. The Queen Mulke Gospels, which are in Venice. And that's one of the canons at the beginning of the Gospel. Beautiful. Uh, then, for each manuscript, we have a sample of script enlarged. We have an alphabet which we made from a scan of the manuscript, a description, and you can see another example. This is the oldest Armenian manuscript on paper, number 900 and, uh, from the year 981. Thank you for all the great work that you have been doing. Um, and uh, good luck with all your new projects. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, hope to see you often in Armenia.